All right, guys, welcome. I'm John the Realtor here. Welcome to part five of our series, which is going to be page one of the form RPA, which is the California Residential Purchase Agreement and Joint Escrow Instructions. Um, this contract, this, this document is, is actually 16 pages, and the each page represents something in the contract. Now, uh, everything in yellow that you see here has to be filled out. So I already filled it out um, and I'm going to go through each section so you can see um, what needs to be filled out and I can explain um, further. So first and foremost, uh, date prepared would be whatever date you prepare that offer. Um, this offer is from and then you would put Jane or excuse me, John Doe. Now if John Doe and Jane Doe are buying the property together, you would put Jane Doe there. And if they have two other parties that you can put up to four buyers on a, a residential purchase agreement, but this is basically, um, typically you have one or two buyers. So, um, of course your property to be acquired is whatever the property address is. Um, you put the parcel number in there. This is obviously fake information. Um, so the terms of the purchase are specified below on the following pages. The buyer and seller are referred to here as parties. Brokers and agents are not parties to this agreement. Now, if you're an agent representing a family member in this um, offer, I'm going to show you where to disclose uh, that you are an agent and related to the buyer, but not um, you don't have any vested interest in the purchase. Okay. So the disclosure, the parties each acknowledge the receipt of the AD, which is agency relationship. We talked about that. So they're acknowledging once again that they got that. The confirmation is the following agency relationship are hereby confirmed for this transaction. So if you remember from the first video, it talked about um, additional brokerages and additional agents. This is where you put that. So your seller brokerage firm is whoever it is. And then um, the, the license numbers are super important. If you don't know the license numbers, guys, you can get it from the MLS. The listing usually will have that information. Um, and you want to check mark who they're representing. Oftentimes, I will get an offer, and not only are the license numbers not there, but also the check boxes are not checked at all. That's an incomplete offer. So you have to complete this stuff. And quite frankly, if I get this incomplete, generally what I do is I'll send it back and say, look, your offer is incomplete. I'm missing, you know, these things, right? So that's typically what I'll do. Now, on top of that, then it says, more than one brokerage represents either the seller or the buyer. See additional broker acknowledgement. So if you're co-listing this with somebody else from another brokerage, then that's where this check mark will go and then an additional form will be added. All right guys, so basically the next section in here is going to be the table of contents, okay? So the table of contents here talks about all your, again like I said earlier, your meat and potatoes of the offer and everything you're negotiating and offering to the seller. So page one. So basically, guys, you have your purchase price. We're, we put 100000 on this property. Um, a 30-day escrow. So close of escrow is 30 days. You can change this based on what your lender talks to you about. Always talk to your lender about everything. So if they say, um, hey, you know what? I need 45 days. Go 45 days or less than 30 days. Also, if the seller says, you know what? I need to be out by... X date, then you can say this date, or I need it closed by this date, then you can put that specifically. Um, the expiration of the offer, this one, um, just so you guys know, is typically three days. Um, so from the time your buyer signs the offer and it's sent out, that's when the clock starts. Um, or you can say, no, you know what, I want to know by tomorrow because quite frankly, I don't want to waste my time. Um, your initial deposit, you put down your initial deposit. So here we put 7,500. I, I personally don't know if there's a specific rule on how much. Some people tell me you should put, you know, 3% um, of the purchase price. Some people tell me put 10% of the purchase price. Sometimes the seller wants a specific amount specifically. Um, in this case, we put 7,500. Uh, and by the way, if you guys know what that rule is and you've been told by someone, uh, you know, it's X amount that needs to be, I'd love to hear that. Uh, leave it in the comments because I really don't know if there's a specific rule to that number. Um, but anyways, in this case, we would put 7,500 as your earnest money deposit. Um, and it basically here, this is very interesting because your deposit is within three days, excuse me, business days, uh, after acceptance. So three business days. So if your offer was accepted today and it's Saturday, 
well, your escrow is not going to be open probably till Monday sometime. So um, you got to be real careful about that because some people think that it's from the time escrow opens and that's actually incorrect. It's from the time that it's accepted by the seller or your counter offer is accepted by yourself or, or however the acceptance is. So if you are, if you have acceptance at the end of day, let's say Friday and they can't open escrow till Monday, change that and, and go five days or fifth day because that way your buyer has till Wednesday to send that deposit in and they're not gonna get in trouble with cancellation threatening and all that stuff. So that's what I would do. Um, increased deposit, I, you don't have to enter. I just did it because I wanted to tell you guys what that meant. So basically, if you have 7,500 and let's say they want you to place 10,000, you could say, look, give me, you know, I'm, I'll put $2,500, but do me a favor, give me until the 19th and I'll go ahead and do that, okay? Um, there's another form that needs to be signed, which is the DID form. Um, you need to get that signed when, when you submit your offer so that it's in there, okay? If you don't have it, of course, leave it unchecked and you're okay. Um, the loan information is super important, guys, and I'll, and I'll end it with this. So the loan information, your loan amount, your loan amount is based on how much your down payment is with the type of loan that you're doing. So if you have a conventional loan and your buyer is putting 20% down, that's an 80-20. So your 80% it would be your loan amount, which would be 80,000. Okay, and then their balance of down payment at the bottom, as you see, says $12,500. That is the difference between their 7,500 and the, the difference between that amount equaling $20,000 being 20%. Also, your interest rate, let's say they got the loan for 4.85%, you find out from the lender what the, what the fixed rate um, not to exceed is, because you need to put that in your offer. And again, this is one of those things that's rarely put into an offer, um, but definitely keep in communication with your lender on it, because that's super important, all right? So if you have an FHA loan, Obviously, your loan amount is going to be a little bit different. So your loan amount is going to be three and a half percent, or excuse me, your your balance of down payment is going to be three and a half percent of the per, of the purchase price. In this case, thirty five hundred dollars is your down payment. So with seventy five hundred down, obviously, there, there's a huge difference here. So this could go towards their closing costs as, as well. But you, obviously, your numbers would be a little bit different here. Um, so that's what that is. Or if they want to put more down, you just structure the loan based on what your lender is telling you. Um, and then, of course, your additional financing would be if you had either another loan in place or seller financing, which would be seller carry finance. Um, and then down at the bottom, you guys would have balance of down payment, which is 12500 Again, that difference between $20,000 and your initial deposit of 7500 and then, of course, your total purchase price of $100,000. And that concludes it for page one. Thank you guys so much for staying. If you've stayed this long, I really appreciate it. Um, be sure to like this video uh, because that will spread this video to help other people. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, again, please leave them in the comments, and I will try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. In the meantime, have a wonderful day, and take care.